Are white fish lazier than colored fish? Always with the stereotypes with you. I can't take this guy anywhere. Hey guys, Tara and Trace here for DNews. And if you are a fan of sushi, then you've probably wondered at some point how all those delicious fish you're eating get their vibrant colors. Yep, and as usual, science has an explanation. It turns out the color of a fish's flesh isn't just random, it's based on a combination of factors, including genetics, bile pigments, and even its swimming routine. Tuna, for example, which are typically a reddish pink color, are considered the Michael Phelps of the sea because of their extreme endurance. Their bodies need extra oxygen in order to feed their muscles, and that comes from a protein called myoglobin, which stores oxygen in the muscles and acts as a pigment, giving them that reddish hue. Interestingly, the same holds true for land mammals. Animals that walk around a lot have more myoglobin in their blood, so their meat is usually darker. What's worrisome is that many seafood hawkers will artificially enhance the color of tuna by exposing it to carbon monoxide gas. That changes it from a gross brown color back into a bright red. Thankfully, that has been deemed illegal in many nations since it can unwittingly expose people to rotten fish. That's why they always tell you to be wary of tuna that's unusually bright in color. So what about white fish? Are they just lazy? I mean, actually, yeah, they kind of are. Yeah. Fish with light-colored flesh like the Pacific halibut lead far less active lives than their red-blooded counterpart. Most of their time is spent resting on the seafloor, so all of their activity comes in very short bursts. When raw, the Pacific halibut's flesh is actually clear. It's the cooking process that causes the proteins in the meat to coagulate, transforming it into a milky white color. And that same process occurs in actually every kind of animal, which is why raw meat always looks different than cooked meat. So what about salmon, the Oompa Loompas of the sea, which is a new name I just gave them. That one's actually a little bit more complicated, but mostly it's a combination of genetics and diet. Salmon are really fond of eating krill, and krill are really fond of eating algae. And the algae they eat contains carotenoids, which are pigments that give food and plants their bright colors. So when krill eat algae and salmon eat krill, the salmon is indirectly consuming those carotenoids, which in turn gives their flesh a bright orange color. But Salmon aren't the only fish who eat krill, so why are they orange and the others aren't? And that is where the genetics part comes in. Most salmon have a color gene that allows carotenoids to penetrate their muscle tissue. Some salmon, however, lack that gene, so even though they're identical to the orange salmon in pretty much every other way, their flesh is actually a grayish white color. They're called ivory kings, and typically they sell for a bit more than regular salmon. Though, they can be hard to get off the shelves because people are so used to seeing that orange color. White fish need love too though, as do bluefish, the jewels of the sea. Another great nickname given by me. The blue lingcod, despite its name, is actually a white fish, just like halibut, but sometimes their flesh will take on a blue color. And that's caused by a bile pigment called biliverdin, which gets into the blood serum and turns their flesh into an extremely bright shade of blue. The question of why this only happens to some fish, or any fish at all, is a complete mystery to biologists. But it's definitely not relegated to just lingcod. The rock greenling and the kelp greenling, which are both cousins to the lingcod, have also been known to adopt a distinctive turquoise color though that is a pretty rare occurrence. Personally, I cannot imagine eating a turquoise fish, but apparently they taste the same as the white ones, and once you cook them, their flesh turns back to white anyway. Animals so. are amazing! Totally! While we're on the subject of animals, let us remind you that it is currently Sloth Week here at Discovery, so all week long we're going to be uploading adorable sloth-related videos for you to fawn over. If you want to see all of them, just head over to slothweek.com. In the meantime, if you have questions, comments, a favorite type of sushi that you want to share with us, just leave it down in the comments. Otherwise, thanks for watching.